In this video, we're going to continue looking at what we can do to create a catch-all zone. So far, we have a catch-all zone that destroys any object that falls into it. Instead, we want to respawn the main character. We don't want our main character to be destroyed. So currently, our main character is just statically instantiated in the scene and doesn't have a spawn point. We need to change that. We need to create a game object where we can respawn our main character. Let's start by creating this game object. Let's rename it spawn point. And let's give it an icon. And now let's position it in the scene. We're going to want our player to spawn somewhere near a hut. Let's just bring that up and over and over and over. Let's look at it from above. All right. And over. Right about there. Let's look at it from the side. Maybe a little bit lower. All right, we have a spawn point. Uh, let's drop our player into the spawn point. Position him at zero inside there. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, let's just run the game. Yeah, that's pretty good. Our player showed up nicely there. Let's raise him up a little bit and give the player a little bit of a fall. Let's try that again. Yeah, a little drop as he spawns. That's pretty nice. Now we need a way to identify our main character so that that script that is currently destroying objects can look at the object that arrives and decide, is it the main character? Do I need to respawn it? Or is it something else? Do I need to destroy it? Typically, this is done by tagging the main character with the tag player. I don't like that. I like to create my own tag called main character. Just because the word player is used so much, it can get a little bit confusing. All right, so now we can come back and we can tag this fella main character. All well and good. Now we're going to do some scripting and our scripts are going to look for main character and they're going to send a message called respawn to the main character. I like to use a file called literals for that. I don't like to hard code strings. So we're just quickly going to create another script, another C sharp script, and we're going to name it literals and we're going to open it up and we're going to populate it just with a couple of public static strings. And the reason I do this is because if you type something incorrectly as a hard coded string, the compiler won't catch it. But if you type something incorrectly as a literal, the compiler will catch it. So again, we don't need these. Get rid of that as well. All we need is a couple of strings. Public, so anyone can get at them. Static, because they're class members. String, because they're strings. And we want main character. And that is going to equal, oddly enough, main character. Need a semicolon. And we want another one. Now let's just copy and paste all of this. And we want this one to be called respawn. And it will be respawn. So those are the two strings that we're going to use. And we'll reference them in other scripts as literals.mainCharacter and literals.respawn. Back to Unity. So let's open up the catch-all script. And let's make a change. Currently, we're destroying everything. We don't want to destroy the main character. So what we want to say is if literals dot main character, I'm going to hit tab to autocomplete that, is equal to the other game object tag. Then we're just going to send a message. We're going to send a message to other game object. Let me grab that other game object. I'm going to copy that and paste it. And we're going to do something called send message. And the message that we're going to send is that literals respawn and we're going to use a send message option require receiver that means that whoever we send this to must implement it and if they don't we'll get an error and then we're just going to return out of this function we don't need to do anything else and if this if condition isn't true we'll fall through and we'll still destroy the game object so save that all right one more script Main character manager. We're going to attach this to the main character. And now we're going to open it up. We don't need these, so we're just going to highlight them and press delete. 
What we need instead is we need to implement respawn, because that's the message we're going to get. A little comment that tells us what this does. And what does it do? A couple of things. First, we're going to reposition the main character. And we're just going to reposition it to the position of the parent. Because the main character is parented on the spawn point, we can use that. And we'll also rotate it. This way we can rotate the spawn point and that'll cause the character's rotation to change. And again, we're just going to take the rotation of the parent. And we're done. So let's check this out in Unity. Fire up the game. Let's go for a run off the end of the earth and see what happens. Now maybe our water needs to be a bit deeper. We may have to lower our seabed. All right, here's the end of the seabed. Off we go. And boom, we're respawned. And with that, we can finish our videos on how to create a catch-all zone.